Hello, everyone. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Seb, and I'm Elsie. And in this unit, we're really getting out there. Today, we're going to be taking you to explore the great outdoors, or Da Ziran, to the United Nations in your classroom, not in New York, and of course. To the classroom to learn a couple of handy translation tricks, but first, spring has sprung. It's heating up, and we're in that time of year that's perfect for escaping the city and exploring the countryside. Elsie, have you been on any outdoors adventures recently? Yes, last month I went camping with my friends. Ooh, awesome! Right. Where、In、did、Pingling. you go? In Pingling. In Pingling. Pingling. Have you ever been there? I've driven through Pingling.、Uh-huh. I would really like to stay in Pingling. Yeah. So we we were there. We camped by the river,、mm-hmm. and we had a barbecue together. Ooh. The air was really fresh. Mmm. And mm. it was really good to just relax by the river. Mm, yes, it's a very beautiful part of Taiwan. Well, I imagine Pingling is actually very nice around now because the tea plants they should be kind of very full. They're about to do their harvest in a couple of months. 是的，没错。And that's not the only place that is very special to visit、mm. around this time of year. It's also a great time of year to go to Miaoli and Xinju. Miaoli and Xinju. Hmm. Do you know why? Because. There is a kind of flower. There is a kind of flower blooming. It's blooming in this season. In this season, <laughs> in Miaoli and Xinju,、uh, it's a great time to go to those places to take pictures, to go on nice nature walks. But that is actually going to be the topic of our first translation sentence. So, shall we get started? 今天第一句我们要翻译的是呢，五月在台湾西北部绽放的油桐花 （Tong Tree Blossom） 经常使山顶看起来像被大雪覆盖。那时态我们要用的是现在简单式，用来描述事实。Mm, I can imagine this sentence being in a travel magazine or maybe in a Netflix documentary、mm. about Taiwan. So, how do we translate this sentence? Well, in English, we could say, "Tung tree blossoms that bloom in May in northwestern Taiwan often make the mountain peaks look like they're covered with heavy snow." Wow, that's a really beautiful image we get from that sentence. Tung flowers or yu tong hua are beautiful white flowers that fill the branches of tung trees through much of late spring. You might know that tung flowers are an important symbol of hacker culture in Taiwan because about a hundred years ago they would use the oil to make a lot of different products, and they also create a lot of hua bu, those um flowery fabrics that they use. Hua the bu liao, yeah, hua the bu liao in hacker culture often have tung flowers on them. But did you know that tung flowers are not actually originally from Taiwan or from where the hacker are originally from?、Hmm. They're from southwest China, Vietnam, and Myanmar, Mian Dien. Mian Dien. Hmm. Okay, so we we here see the tung flower. The tung flower how is it? It's blooming. 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 When the cherry trees blossom, thousands of people crowd into parks to see them.、Mm-hmm. When tong trees blossom, they really are full of flowers. So we could also say that they burst into flower. When a tree bursts into flower, lots of flowers open, kind of like hua mankai or kai manhua in Chinese. You might remember that the word burst means explode, bao jia. So we have this idea that the flowers are opening very quickly and suddenly. They're not literally exploding. However, we can also use burst、uh, into flames as well, which means something sets on fire very quickly. So burst normally means that a change is happening very fast or very quickly. So the tong trees are in flower, but what happens about a week, two weeks, a month after the flowers open? Well, they start to wilt. Now, wilt is a verb we can spell W I L T, and when a flower wilts, it kind of loses its color, it starts to droop, and it starts to die. So that's what happens, you know, when the sakura trees are losing their petals, the cherry blossoms are all falling off the trees. They fall off and they wilt on the ground. 
，也就是开完花之后，经过一段时间，花会枯萎凋谢。嗯哼。再来呢，我们要看到的是表示方位的用法哦。用英文表示方位的时候啊，要将中文颠倒过来变成英文。例如呢，我们中文的东北方，英文你要说的是北东方，也就是 North East。先写北，再写东，以此类推。所以 southeast 东南方 ，northwest 西北方 ，southwest 西南方。那表示两地的方位的时候啊，你要注意你使用的介系词哦。第一种表示 A 在 B 的范围内，我们要用 in， 像是 Taiwan is in the east of Asia， 台湾位于亚洲的东部。那台湾在亚洲里面，所以我们的介系词用的是 in。再来呢，如果我们要表示 A 在 B 的范围之外。不是在里面哦，是外面。那我们可以用 to 这个介系词。For example, Mexico is to the south of the U.S. 墨西哥在美国的南方。Exactly. 再来呢，我们要看的是看起来似乎的用法。那我们可以用 look like 或者是连缀动词 seem 和 appear 来说。那举一个例子给同学喽。像我们可以说啊，主词加上 seem 或是 appear， 后面接上 to be。加名词，或是 to be 加形容词，或者是 to 加原形动词。那注意哦，刚刚的 to be 加名词 ，to be 加形容词 ，to be 是可以省略掉的。So here's the example: the creature that washed up on the beach appeared to be a giant jellyfish.、Mm. 被冲刷到海滩上的生物似乎是一只巨型水母。Mm, I see. When we use a seem, appear, look like. And then an adjective or a noun. What we're doing is creating a simile. Be you. Similes let readers and listeners understand what you mean by giving a little bit more creative color to a sentence. So, for example, if I say that the sun was like a lemon in the sky, we have an idea that the sun is very yellow. It looks very strong against the blue sky. We're getting an idea of what the sun looked like to the writer. Metaphors. And you are another creative comparison we can use, which is a little bit harder to spot in a sentence. Here's an example: the night sky was filled with tiny diamonds. Here, we're not saying that there are actual diamonds in the sky. We mean that the night sky is full of stars, but like diamonds, stars glitter. So that gives us a good idea of what the night sky looked like to the writer. Let's take a look at the second part of Part A. This remarkable scenery offers people a chance to witness the natural beauty of Taiwan and feel the joy of coexisting with nature. 这句的中文是呢，这非凡的风景为人们提供了见证台湾自然美景的机会，并感受与自然共存的喜悦。那这边我们用的时态呢，是现在简单时一样，我们在描述事实。Mm、hmm. Wow, it certainly sounds remarkable. Remember that the word "remarkable" means very special or amazing. It comes from the verb "remark," which is, means to say something about something. If something is so special, it makes you want to talk about it. Then it must be very special, right?、Mm-hmm. So I imagine this scenery must be worth seeing. 那我们这边用 remarkable 来形容后面的 scenery， 代表风景景色的字就是它了。那记得哦，它是不可以数的。而且我们常常容易呢，将它和 scene 混淆。scene 指的是场景或场面。表示某事情发生的场景，像是 crime scene 叫做犯案现场、犯罪现场。那这边给同学们一个 scenery 的例句哦。We took a hike in the mountains to enjoy great forest scenery. 我们在山区践行，享受森林壮丽的风景。Mm-hmm, that's right. When we're talking about scenery, we are normally talking about pretty beautiful landscapes. That's why we often say that we enjoy scenery or that we admire scenery. We can also witness it too. 没错 ，witness 代表的是见证，也就是看见某事物。For example, people all over town witnessed a strange object flying in the sky last night. 昨天晚上啊，整座镇上的人目睹了一个奇怪的物体在天上飞。他们看到了这个东西。Hmm. Witness isn't only a verb, though. We can also use it as a noun to mean someone that has seen something take place. Normally, a crime. For example, the police wanted to find the person who robbed the bank, so they asked around to see if there were any witnesses. 中文呢、啊，我们说是目击者、目击证人。再来呢，自然美景怎么说？我们可以用 natural beauty. Natural beauty 也可以用来形容人的自然美。
。那这边的例句给的是呢 ，The spectacular Taroko Gorge is full of natural beauty and is one of the most popular tourist destinations in Taiwan. 我们讲到的是壮观的泰鲁阁啊，充满自然美景，而且是台湾最受欢迎的旅游胜地之一。There's certainly a lot of natural beauty to be found around Taiwan. What's your favorite place in nature that you visited, Elsie? I'll say Hualien. Hualien. Oh,、mm. Hualien is very special. Whereabouts? Yes, and there are so many beautiful natural things for us to、mm-hmm. look at. Right. What was your favorite part of Hualien? Favorite part? I'll say Taroko Gorge. Mm, mm. Taroko Gorge. Yes, with its like its high cliffs and those and、uh, beautiful mountains.、There's, Very spectacular. Spectacular. Or we、mm-hmm. can say remarkable, right? Mm-hmm. Or we could say that it will take your breath away. Mm. Mm-hmm. When something takes your breath away, it makes you go wow in like such a big way that you can't say anything. You、mm. know, it's so remarkable you can't remark on it. Or breathtaking. Breathtaking、mm. as well. Exactly. Okay, we also saw the word coexist, didn't we? Yes, 共存就是共同存在。我们可以用 co c o 加上 exist 存在这个字来表示。那字首如果你看到 co， 它有共同的意思，像是 coworker 共事者，你的同事 ；co-founder 共同创办人。For example, we need to find ways to coexist with the animals that live around us. 我们需要找到能够与生活在我们周围的动物共存的方式 Okay, it's now time to switch gears and take a look at part B of our translation unit. Part B 的句子是呢，模拟联合国 Model United Nations 对于世界各地热衷全球议题的学生而言是一项国际盛事。那时态一样，我们要使用的是现在简单式描述事实。Hmm, Model United Nations is an international event for students worldwide who are passionate about global issues. So, did you take part in the Model United Nations when you were in high school? No, I didn't. But I guess some of my classmates did.、Mm. So normally in the Model United Nations, you have to practice a lot of different skills. For example, you might learn about debating. Okay, so kind of arguing in a formal way, the way that kind of politicians argue、mm. when they're trying to change laws or make changes to the country. That should be a lot. You also have to get good at giving presentations and also doing research because you will be given a country that you might not be familiar with, and you will have to learn about. That country's culture and what kind of attitudes you should take as a representative of that country. So it's a very good skill to have if you're interested in diplomacy or 外交外交 So the Model United Nations is a popular extracurricular activity or a school activity you can do in addition to your regular classes. Joining the sports team, chess club, the school choir—these are all extracurricular activities. You don't need to do them to finish high school, but they're a lot of fun. Plus, you can learn some new skills and make new friends. So, what kind of extracurricular activity is the Model United Nations, Elsie? I'm not sure. What do you think? I think that it's more of a cultural exchange kind of、mm-hmm, activity. 文化上交流有关系的。嗯、mm-hmm. 嗯。OK， 那再来呢？要知道模拟联合国，我们就要知道国际盛事怎么说。那国际盛事呢？我们当然要用 international 来形容。后面的名词我们放的是 event。International event.、Mm-hmm. 那再来呢？有一个副词叫做“在世界各地”，我们放在 students 的后方。这个字呢叫做 worldwide。worldwide， 它有 all over the world 或是 around the world 的意思在。For example, the FIFA World Cup always attract millions of viewers worldwide. 世界杯足球赛总是吸引了全球数百万的观众。嗯、mm-hmm. 哼 ，You probably know that something that is worldwide is also global. But do you know what we call it when a photo, video, or recording becomes very famous in very little time? We say that it goes viral. Viral videos are videos that are seen by everyone. The YouTube clips that have one million, two million, ten million viewers in just a few days. 
。再来呢，我们看到官代 who 的限定用法，它用来限定先行词 students 的条件或者是特质。那形容词子句里面呢，我们看到的是 who are passionate about global issues。再来这边多给同学们一个例句哦。Dennis was the only kid in the class who finished the homework assignment. 这边你看到形容词子句是 who 开始一直到 assignment who finished the homework assignment 用来修饰限定前面的 kid 这个孩子。那这个孩子是谁呢？就是丹尼斯这个小朋友了。丹尼斯是班上唯一一位完成家庭作业的孩子。再来，还有热衷于，我们要怎么说呢？我们可以用形容词 passionate 加上介系词 about。Be passionate about something 就是 be enthusiastic about something， 代表你热衷于爱好做某事。我们这边讲到的是 ，Amel is passionate about music and loves to listen to new songs。阿马尔热衷于音乐，而且很喜欢听新歌。Okay, so it sounds like he really, really likes to write new songs, listen to new songs,、um, listen to music. But Elsie, do you know the difference between enthusiasm or being enthusiastic and passion or being passionate? There's a tiny difference between the two. One、words. of one of them is stronger than the other one. That's true. Exactly. When you're enthusiastic about something, you're eager to do it. You're excited about it. So, for example, maybe you took a new dance class, and every week you're excited to try out the class. You're ready for the class. You look forward to Friday when you're going to have it, and then you go and you take the class. When you're passionate about something, that's a really strong feeling. It's like it's the first thing you think about when you wake up in. The morning, you work very hard to teach the, your skill to other people, or to promote it, to to make sure that lots of people know about it. It's your reason for existing. You're passionate about it. So, passion is a very strong word. Okay, so you use passionate about will be you use be enthusiastic about 来的更强烈一些 Exactly, exactly. So I think there's always for all of us have something that we're passionate about,、mm. something that means a lot to us. What are you passionate about, Elsie? I'm passionate about teaching English. Ooh, okay. I'm glad and somebody was. And working out. <laughs> okay, and working out. Okay,、yeah. two great things to be passionate about. So I suppose you jumped out of bed this morning and rushed to the front door to get to this recording because you couldn't wait to teach English. Today、yes. at AMC. Yes. Fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> I would say I'm more enthusiastic about teaching than passionate about teaching,、uh -huh. but I do enjoy doing it too. Okay, when we talk about someone being passionate, that's a good thing. But what do we mean when we when we want to say that somebody is too passionate? Because you can be too passionate about something too. What do we say when that becomes a problem? Well, we say that somebody is obsessed with it, or they have an obsession with it. Zhao mi yu. Zhao mi yu. In bad way, right? Like、mm -hmm. too much. Exactly. 太多了 Exactly, too much. Somebody who's obsessed with something might skip meals. They might forget to sleep. You know, all they do is think about this one thing. So, for example, if Elsie is obsessed with video games, she probably spends all her money on them. She often misses work. She stays up too late because she doesn't stop playing them. She's obsessed with video games. Can you be obsessed with a person? You can be obsessed with a person as well. We can use that in a positive and a negative sense.、Mm -hmm. Normally, it's still more negative, though. So I say, "Oh, Elsie, she's obsessed with me." It、uh, sounds like you're too, too interested in me, too crazy about you.、Huh? Yes, I'm like, "Ugh, when is she going to leave me alone?" <laughs> that girl is obsessed with me. She has an obsession with me. Okay, let's not get too obsessed with this vocab, though. Let's move on to our second sentence. 第二个句子呢，我们要说的是啊，除了增加国际观之外，学生也被鼓励与来自不同国家的志同道合的人建立友谊。那我们的时态要用的是现在简单式描述事实。嗯哼。Apart from gaining an international perspective, students are also encouraged to form friendships with like-minded individuals from different countries. Okay, and this this kind of works. The great thing about the model United Nations is maybe you're in a school where there's no foreign students, but because you're being encouraged to research different cultures to learn about how different people see the world, you are still being encouraged to talk to people who are going to approach the problems you face in in this activity in the model United Nations in different ways, and so you're encouraged to. 
engage with people with an international perspective. We also saw that phrase apart from, didn't we? 对，我们这边看到了 apart from 或者 aside from， 后面加上名词或 v i n g， 可以表示除了的用法。那它兼具了包含与排除之意，需要根据句意来判断哦。Okay, we also saw the phrase. In addition to as well, or we can use this in a similar way. When we put in addition to at the beginning of a structure, so at the beginning of the sentence, we mean that in addition to one thing, as well as the first thing, also the second thing. So, for example,、um, in addition to a coke, Emma ordered a burger and fries. She didn't just order a coke; she also ordered a burger and fries. So, when you see the structure, you know that something else is going to be added onto the end. 也就是除了什么。东西之外，还有另外一个。Mm-hmm. 那这边再给同学们一个例句哦。Apart from my siblings, I'm not very close to anyone in my family. 除了我的兄弟姐妹，我跟我的家人并不太亲近。Mm-hmm, exactly. I'm very close to my siblings. You could say we're like two peas in a pod. We use this phrase to say that two people are really close friends and they're always together. Because if you see peas, you know the vegetable peas, they come in a little pod and they're all lined up together. So if two, you're like two peas in a in a pod. You're never apart from each other. You're always together. You're best friends.、Hmm. So who would you say you're like two peas in a pod with, Elsie? Who do you spend the most time? With, um, can I say my husband? You can, yes.、Oh, so,、mm-hmm. can I say my husband and I are two peas in a pot? You can, yeah. My husband and I are like two peas in a pot. Are like two peas exactly, in a pot. Exactly, exactly. Because you're not really two peas in a pot. Right.、Mm-hmm. So, simile. A simile.、Mm, It's a simile. Exactly. 然后再来呢，我们要看到国际观怎么说喽。我们可以用 international perspective. International、mm-hmm. 一样国际的，那一个人的观点 perspective 这个字来代表。Mm-hmm. 那片语有一个是 from somebody's perspective， 那就是指的从某个人的观点来看。Here's the example: Traveling to many countries has given Gareth an international perspective on how people live.、Mm-hmm. 到许多国家旅行，使得 Gareth 对人们的生活产生国际观。所以我们的 international perspective。On something, 代表是对某事的国际观点。Mm, Elsie, you've spent quite a bit of time in the United States,、mm, haven't you? Yeah. When you went to the United States, did that help you get an international perspective on life in Taiwan, for example? Yeah, I think so. Hmm. How did things change for you? How, what did you notice was different when you came back? Um, I've learned that Taiwanese people are really friendly. Hmm. That's one of the big differences. Hmm. And. I think maybe we can be more open-minded. Okay.、Hmm. Okay. Yes. When you get an international perspective,、yeah. you notice good things and bad things about your home、right. country. So it's very useful for knowing what you can be proud of and what you can help change in、hmm. your community. So, for example, when I went abroad, I noticed that people in the UK can be quite cold and awkward sometimes,、hmm. but they're also very considerate, especially of people from different backgrounds. Right. So、uh, that's something that definitely that I'm proud of. But I also try to be somebody. I try. To be a bit more open and friendly than I might think, I should immediately think I should be in、mm. a situation. Okay, we also saw the phrase form friendships, didn't we? Now,、right. form. We know that this is a noun. We know that we can say, say that, like, talk about a form, a piece of paper.、Mm. But we're not using it as a noun in this sentence, are we? 没有这边呢，我们用的是动词的形式，建立或是形成。所以建立友谊，我们可以说 form friendships。那也可以用。Establish 这个字来替换， mm-hmm. 或者是呢 ，make friends 也是结交、成为朋友的意思。Exactly, and establish and form. There's a slight difference there. Establish is a bit more formal. So, for example, two countries can establish diplomatic relations. So, Taiwan has established diplomatic relations with 17 countries. But form we use for you know friendships、um, or connections you know between two people. That kind of situation. 没错 ，establish 会比 form 来的更正式。Mm-hmm. 好了，这边的例句说的是呢 ，many working adults have a hard time forming new friendships because they are so busy. 许多在职的成年人因为太忙了而很难建立新的友谊。Mm-hmm. 
That's、mm-hmm. the truth. Exactly, exactly. When you don't work on maintaining your relationships, you can actually drift apart.、Mm. Now, drift originally just means to float、uh, on water and move in a direction without your control. So, for example, think about、uh, the ending of Titanic. You know, the very sad part where where Jack falls into the sea and he dies. They are on a door, right? They are floating on the water and they are drifting around on the ocean. They're moving. But obviously, they don't have control over the piece of wood that they're sitting on. You know, so they're drifting. When we talk about friends drifting apart, they're moving apart without their control. They're not meaning to not be friends anymore. They're just. Busy with their lives, or they move to different cities, and they don't have an opportunity to speak to each other anymore, and so they become less close after over time. They know less about each other, and eventually, they're not friends anymore. They drift apart. It's sad, but it happens. 那如果是志同道合、志趣相投的朋友，我们可以怎么说呢？我们可以用形容词后面再加上名词以及 ed 来组成一个复合形容词。像是 like-minded， 志趣相投的、志同道合的人。Mm-hmm. 那其他和 minded 有关的复合形容词，还有很常见的 narrow-minded， 心胸狭窄的，或是我刚刚提到的 open-minded， 心胸开阔的。好，还有像是 absent-minded， 心不在焉的，都是相关的字。Mm-hmm. Here's the example. Gloria cares about human rights, and she often discusses the topic with like-minded people. 这个人呢，他很在乎人权，所以他经常和志同道合的人讨论这个话题。Hey Elsie, do you know what we call someone who is really absent-minded? No. What? Hmm. Hmm. Oh shoot! I forgot. Seb. I'm just kidding. We say <laughs> that they have the memory of a goldfish. 金鱼的记忆 Exactly. <laughs> Scientists used to think that goldfish could only remember things for three seconds. So someone with the memory of a goldfish is going to draw a lot of blanks. They're going to forget things. All the time. Oh, it reminded me of the movie Fighting Dory. Oh, exactly. Even though Dory is not a goldfish. Yes, but she has a terrible memory. <laughs> Unit Seven, Translation. May thirteenth, tongue tree blossoms that bloom in May in northwestern Taiwan often make the mountain peaks look like they're covered with heavy snow. This remarkable scenery offers people a chance to witness the natural beauty of Taiwan, and feel the joy of coexisting with nature. Model United Nations is an international event for students worldwide who are passionate about global issues. Apart from gaining an international perspective, students are also encouraged to form friendships with like-minded individuals from different countries. <laughs> okay. Well, it looks like we're out of time for today, but you guys now can go and、um, continue.、Practice. You can. You've got your practice section.、Mm. You can work on those, and we will join you again with another writing prompt later in the month. For English Digest, I'm Seb. I'm Elsie, and we'll see you again soon. Bye bye. Bye.